Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Intrigue and Deception Unfold at a Hotel Late at Night. The second story, The Epic Quit of a Key Employee. The first story is, A Local Sob Story. So it's 2.26 a.m. and I wish these people would go to sleep. Unfortunately, as they're all locals, they won't until 4, 5, 6, 7 a.m. and probably ask for a super late checkout. One already asked for 1 p.m. when checkout is 11. Keep in mind he checked in on Saturday. It's now Sunday shift according to the rules of working in a hotel. Yet it is also 2.28 a.m. Monday morning. This guy, twice on Saturday after he checked in, he came to get his key remade. He checked in around 8 p.m. and by the time I left at 9.30, he had already come to the desk to get his key remade twice. As I'm walking in the building at 10.40, this evening he's getting his key made again. He must have left at some point because around 1.48 a.m. he comes to the desk yet again to get his key remade. While he's at the desk, he asks me what he has to do to stay over. I begin to tell him that since we only work online, he will have to make a new reservation online, as we do not make them at the desk. This is 100% true, as we have no reservations line. We are 100% online only. He then said that he only has cash. Upon informing him that we're a cash-free property, he began to sniffle and tear up. He said he was desperate for a room and then wanted to go buy a prepaid gift card. I pulled up his reservation and noticed he has a card on file with his name, as we do not accept gift cards or cards that do not match the name of the guest. He then asked if I could use the card on file. I said no as it's a brand new third-party reservation and our system will not let us transfer cards already on file. We would need it again. The whole time I'm guessing that the card is probably not his. He went and sat down in the lobby and did one of those very loud fake cries trying to gain sympathy. Saying he has nowhere else to go and that he lost his wallet today. Yet when I see him turn from the desk and walk to the lobby sofa to sit down, I see a very thick wallet imprint in his back pocket. When he saw that I wasn't paying him any mind at all whatsoever, he stopped crying, became silent, and walked to the elevators. I had a strange feeling about him, so I watch him go to his room on camera. I see him open his room door on the 14th floor, and suddenly a dog bolts out and runs down the hallway. I pull up his folio again and look. There's no notes about a dog anywhere, nor are there any notes in our communications log. Come to think of it, when the front desk agent checked him in, I was standing a few feet away and never saw a dog at the moment either. I call the guest room. He answers and I ask him if he has a pet in the room. We're sort of pet friendly, as we do allow cats and small dogs under 50 pounds. But there's a $75 per stay charge. He says he doesn't have a dog at all, and I told him that I can show him the camera footage as I had literally just watched the dog bolt from his room and run down the hallway. Since he was caught and knows that I saw it, he admits that yes, he does have a pet in the room. I have to double check his folio again and see how he made the reservation as all but one OTA site doesn't state the pet fee but the rest do. Luckily he made his reservation via crackhead tonight, which states the pet fee. I tell him that I have to charge him this from his incidentals, and he begins to suddenly fake cry again and say he has no money other than that. Yet he told me prior he has lots of cash. Hmm. It was at this time that I told him that it was best that he check out in the morning, and I was even nice enough to extend his check out by one hour. Even after 13 years at the same hotel in San Francisco and believing locals there were bad, Chicago locals are a thousand times worse. Update. Ultimately, this guy did not stay over. From what I was told, he came down to the lobby at around 1 p.m. and began to cry and whine and try to get the hotel to do something for him. They didn't and he left. I thought it was all said and done and he was gone. I was incorrect. Just after I come on for the NA shift with a total of one check-in left, the guest arrives to check in a nice foreign couple who had been assigned room 2703. Now this room was vacant and clean in my system, so of course I'm going to check them into a vacant and clean room. I proceed with the check-in process and issue them the keys, wish them a good night and send them on their way. A few minutes later the females come down and approach the desk. She actually apologizes to me and says, I'm so sorry, there are belongings in that room and the door is open. I apologized and gave them a suite on the same floor and said WTF to myself. I look in the system and see that a woman had been in the room the previous night and thought maybe she had somehow extended her stay. 
I created a lockout key and take the elevators up to the 27th floor. I had to be quick because as I was doing this, a homeless man attempted to enter my lobby. However, I had to lock the guest out. When I get up to see the door is ajar with the long metal flip lock pushed outside. I open the door and walk in. Just inside is a taped up cardboard box with clothing inside. Yes, you heard me right, a taped up cardboard box. Near the box were what seemed to be three larger insulated white zipper bags like one would use for catering purposes. I was puzzled. Anyway, I used the key on the lock and headed back downstairs. I had contacted the previous shift to see if maybe he saw anything, and he said that there was a woman with a cardboard box of stuff yesterday but not earlier today. Hmm, okay, fine. When I asked him about the white bags, he said that he never saw the lady with them. Only the cardboard box as she said she was moving. All this was right at the beginning of my shift. Roll around to approximately 3 a.m. I'm standing over by the coffee area and part of the outside of the front of the hotel is in my view. I happen to look over and I see this guy come into the building. When I arrived, the first thing I did was check to see if he had stayed over as I had been curious. He was checked out of the system at 12.45 p.m. He proceeded to walk back to the elevators. I had my suspicions, so I let him do it and ran to the cameras to see where he was going. Sure enough, he got off on the 27th floor. Turned left off the elevator and about three-fourths of the way to 2703. Keep in mind, we only have eight rooms per floor, so what we see on camera is pretty clear. He stops, dead in his tracks and hangs his head. He goes back to the elevator and gets on. I pop out to the front desk and act as if I know nothing. I hear the doors open on the elevator and glance at my camera at the desk that has the view of the elevator doors. Off he steps. He approaches the desk and proceeds to tell me that he needs a key for 2703. Playing it cool, I asked him his name, even though I already knew it, and I tell him there's no reservation under this name. He then claims how strange that is, but that he's in this room because he had checked out from the previous room, stored his belongings with the desk, and checked in about 1.5 hours later. Okay, someone could have screwed up. It's entirely possible that someone cancelled his reservation by accident. That the name is spelled incorrectly or any number of things. I do a search and find nothing. At this point, I have him sit down as I need to call my operations manager and see if maybe our system has done something strange. This has happened before as the system we're currently using is made for smaller properties, not large ones like ours. And it's done some insane things. However, to be honest, what I really wanted to call my OM for was to pull up the camera footage starting from around 12.30 p.m. He immediately does and sees something within minutes of footage. The room this guy had previously been in was 1407, which happens to be right next to the service hallway. He had been the only person on 14 the previous night, so his room was the only one needed cleaning. So the housekeeping staff had not yet come to that floor. My OM sees him remove three white bags from the room and enter the service hallway. About 30 seconds to a minute later, this guy comes out with no bags. Next, my OM sees him get on the elevator but doesn't come to the lobby. Instead, he sees this guy get off on the 29th floor, highest floor but no rooms, then go to the stairs and get off on 28. He walks down the hallway looking at room doors. The guy then takes the stairs and gets off on 27 where he sees housekeeping, just outside of 2703. Normally what I'm about to say would not matter, but in this instance it does. He sees a Spanish-speaking housekeeper and he too speaks Spanish. My OM sees a conversation of about five minutes, and then this guy goes into room 2703 as the housekeeper enters the service hall on that floor. Moments later he exited the room, went back down to 14, grabbed the bags from the service hall and went back up the elevator. All of this happened in a matter of minutes. As my OM is telling me all of this, I'm flabbergasted. How? How did all this happen? I exited the back office. I then crossed to the chair directly across where this guy was sitting. I sat down casually. I then began to tell him that we have camera footage of him doing these things and described in detail exactly what was seen. I told him that I had every right to call the police, but if he told me the honest truth that I wouldn't call them, but if I suspected even the smallest lie that I would. To my shock, he told me a story that I believed to be true, as he began to cry for real this time. He said that he had planned to stay but couldn't get the money together and because he couldn't do so, that he was going to go around and see if he could find another room that had been open. He did. He stated that he had made the housekeeper believe that he was already in room 2703, that he was staying over in that room even though it was a checkout on the housekeeper boards. Once he had convinced housekeeping that he entered the room and flipped the lock to prop open the door, and then went to get his stuff and took it into the room where he slept for a few hours, and then propped the door open again, so that when he returned later he could get into the room. During this time I'm thinking about where his dog was, what had happened to the dog that was running up and down the hall the night before. I had asked him about it and he said that he had taken it to his friend's place. 
I told the guy that he had to leave the property immediately, and if he wanted to retrieve the white bags, he would need to come back between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to do so. That if he were to set foot on the property, any other time at all, that the police would be called. He got up from the lobby sofa and walked out the front door. I have so many questions. Update 3. I return today at 3 p.m. Of course, the moment I get in, I get called to the office by my OM so that he can tell me exactly WTF happened. The reason the room was marked vacant and clean in the system is because the housekeeping manager had assigned 2703 as a checkout. The housekeeper had marked it on her board as such, but never communicated the issue to the manager. The manager had assumed it was clean and vacant due to this fact. The next day, the box full of women's clothing was taken down to housekeeping where the housekeeping manager called the previous guest to find out if she wanted the items. According to the guest, the box had ripped, as it had gotten wet and she couldn't take it with her, but had plans to come get it later. Yet she just left it in the room? That doesn't make sense. I have a feeling she was trying some BS as well. The housekeeper on the floor claims that the guy had said he was a stayover in that room. Sometimes this happens where people were reserved last minute to stay over, so she assumed that was the case. However, she never asked management about it. The second story is, quitting a toxic job with a bold exit. I had a job that was only ever a temporary situation while waiting on something else to come through, moving to another country. I didn't mind the job, but it had some serious issues with management and the labor pool. Certain employees were chummy with the manager, so they basically got to screw off the whole shift, taking extra smoke breaks and snack breaks while on the clock, leaving work for everyone else to finish. When the time came to quit, I actually gave them three weeks notice. I didn't have to, but I had a definite end date and let them know as soon as it was set in stone. On my next to last day, they finally got someone in to replace me and I was to train her. I began my training session only to find that the tool cart we used was a complete mess. Knowing who was the last employee to use the cart as one of the worst employees on my team, I went to the manager to complain about it. This wouldn't be the first or even tenth time I had made a complaint about this employee, but it was no secret she and the manager were best buddies. She gave me a lot of BS excuses to continue showing how she wasn't going to do anything about it. Then she hit me with the big one. And if you don't learn to calm down, I'm just going to have to send you home. I was effing stunned. Thankfully, it was a long walk back to my trainee because I had just enough time to clear my brain and say F this SH. Instead of taking the left hallway to my task, I took the right hallway to the locker room, changed my clothes, punched out and out the effing door I went, one and a half shifts before I was supposed to leave. Didn't say SH to a single person, just walked off the job. Probably wasn't the smartest thing to pee off the only employee who was certified for the task I was training my replacement to do. And legally, you had to be trained by someone certified, but F it. The manager finally decided to show her superiority, and it was to the person making the complaint. And that was the last shred of my last F to give. B, don't threaten to send me home. I'll F and go there on my own. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.